know who Captain Video is? Well, you should, because Captain Video was the first superhero show on television. It's okay, actually, that you don't know who he is, because we're about to tell you. Take you to the secret mountain retreat of Captain Video, master of space, hero of science, captain of the Video Operating from a remote mountain hideout in Earth's far future, Captain Video and his Video Rangers were champions of justice who employed advanced technology, or, you know, 1949's version of advanced technology, to rid the world of evil. Created by Larry Mankin and launched live on June 27, 1949 at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Dumont Television Network, Captain Video originally starred Richard Coogan in the title role and blasted into homes six days a week. Each installment began with the rousing intro theme song using Richard Wagner's Overture to the Flying Dutchman as the camera zoomed in on the high altitude hidden lair of the courageous captain and his intrepid rangers. Each 23 minute episode dealt with Captain Video's quest to take out an assortment of bad guys like Hing Fu Sung, the mad scientist Dr. Polly, Mook the Moon Man, and Nargola, played by a young Ernest Borgnine. The show was written by sci-fi luminaries like Arthur C. Clarke, Jack Vance, Isaac Asimov, and Milt Lesser, who each contributed their own far-out ideas and plots, such as the seven-foot robot, which was also the first appearance of a robot on live televised science fiction. Captain Video is famous for its extremely low-budget Philadelphia production. It later moved to New York City, after which the show often inexplicably switched to footage of old cowboy movies to pad each episode's length. Ah, but here's an old friend of ours who really knows what he's doing, the man with the star on his chest. Oh, put him in the calaboose, the man with the star on his chest. Captain Video also birthed another familiar trend, the tie-in products, at least from a superhero TV show sense. Collectibles featured a super cool flying saucer ring, a secret seal ring, a bubble space helmet, cast photos, electronic goggles, a secret ray gun, a rocket ship keychain, decoders, membership cards, and a set of 12 plastic spacemen and aliens. Early television was sometimes a chaotic free-for-all, and it all added to the fun and spontaneity. The show's prop budget was $25 per week, but the producers made that dollar stretch. Captain Video's secret mountaintop base was a simple drawing on a 4x4 piece of cardboard. The cockpit of Cap's galaxy spaceship was pieced together with cardboard and then decorated with painted on instruments and dials. After 1,500 episodes, the show was canceled, and the reason the captain went away, like most cancellations, had to do with money. You see, when TV first became a thing in the 1940s, there were three major networks, NBC, CBS, and Dumont. ABC came along toward the end of the decade in 1948. Thing was, NBC, CBS, and ABC all also owned radio stations. And in the early days of TV, TV didn't make a lot of money. So those networks had radio profits to fall back on. Dumont didn't. So that's the story of the world's first superhero TV show. Go check out some of their clips on YouTube. They are bonkers. How is Captain Video going to feel when he learns that I, Chapter 40, his bitterest enemy, has also reached the outer limit? <laughs>